in camp they were trying they tried to uh, organize activities so, so that we would keep stay busy and one of them was theater and there were quite a few people interested in theater so they organized this little theater and uh, the point was for us to get together and then and then to perform plays not necessarily learn how to act or do theater, but because there was no one to teach us, no one was that advanced. So all, all, we just got together and then maybe somebody older would kind of direct the group. Grateful, uh, the word grateful is pretty much our philosophy of how our group formed and our mission and our what we do uh, in expressing gratitude to our first and second generation Japanese Americans for everything that they've gone through so we can live a better life here in America. And so that's the grateful title. Crane is a, a Japanese, very symbolic uh, bird in Japanese culture and literature and art. And one of the symbols of the crane is longevity. Uh, and another is uh, happiness. And so a lot of our work is done for senior citizens. And so, it, you know, the idea of longevity and bringing them happiness and kind of ties together with this symbolic bird, the crane. So Grateful Crane Ensemble is the title of our group. Many years with the Grateful Crane um, Ensemble uh, from the ninth, 2000 four or five every time they had their, their production called the Camp Dance Show. And, um, and I only appeared in it as a guest, an old ancient relic of that era. Of the night, you know, when I was in camp and, and I think just only a few who are still living used to entertaining camp. And, and so they asked me to sing a couple of songs when they put the show on. And so um, that's where they started asking me to sing at their different functions, the Great Book Crane. And, and, and I, like I always say, thanks to them. Soji, uh, uh, Hiroshi Kashiwaki's son Soji wrote the play and, and he asked me to sing and, and so I always thank him for bringing me out of the mothballs because I really wasn't singing for many years and I appreciate it. I, would, I was doing a lot of things um, outdoors, um, landscape, you know, the old Ansel Adams type things, Ansel Adams, Edward Weston, uh, those types of shots. Um, but with, I would, I would um, restrict myself to the time available to me. So that kept me doing a lot of my things close to home. In fact, I, I, if I ever put on a show, it'll be titled Close to Home because everything that I've done has been close to home. Something within less than an hour's drive in order to shoot these things. And there's a lot of remarkable things out there to do. Um, to photograph. Sumi was very interesting. She was very alive uh, intellectually. She was very curious, very interested in a lot of things. Um, definitely fascinated by all kinds of art. Wanted to expose me to all kinds of art, all sorts of creative influences. Um, she was really neat. She was. Uh, she had the best. You know, as an artist, you know, she really had an open mind. Was inquisitive, very much interested in exploring things that maybe other people had overlooked. That comes through in her artwork quite a bit. Um, personally, one of the things I, I am particularly grateful for, she was always the one who encouraged me to get involved with computers, to learn how to program and to, to uh, get computers along the way and experiment and play with computer graphics and that sort of thing. She always definitely prioritized that and felt like that was important. It definitely encouraged me to pr pursue that in my life. The family didn't feel he was that much of a celebrity, but toward the end of his life, uh, his pictures of Manzanar, uh, his pictures of uh, some of the uh, celebrity pictures that he took before World War II, uh, he was just starting to get recognition for all this. So. We actually started to see the development of his celebrityness uh, toward the end of his life. When the war broke out and we were evacuated, Canadians were given a choice 
uh, to either go to ghost towns, which is like their segregation center in Canada, or we went as a family unit to a sugar beet farm in Manitoba, which is in central Canada, and which is winter six months out of the year. So we, we went to what they call sugar beet farm and our family contracted a hundred acres and we, did, we, we uh, grew and, and, uh, and harvested sugar beets. Eight years ago, um, she recruited me to you know, begin at Tycho and I picked it up real fast because of the music background. And then to even expand some more, now I'm, I, I used to do a lot of woodwork because I used to do that in high school. And uh, they said, oh, you could build drums. So now I'm the drum builder. So I build all the drums for the group, all the stands, everything that we have for the Tycho group. Uh, it was my designs, and I, I made those, or I got ideas from other people. It's just kind of playing with time as well as space, and uh, playing with uh, sort of the artificiality of constructed images. I mean, how your mind just wants to make sense out of it and read it as one complete image, but it's really lots of different decisions made. And, you know, she was very interested in how, in the tension between wanting to perceive things as one solid image that is just sort of seamless, while simultaneously knowing that it's very constructed in many different ways. <coughs> that was a big theme of her. I'm kind of proud of this one. Um, there's a company uh, in Japan, Mitsubishi, and they have lots of subsidiaries, but they actually make these uh, turbine uh, wind, wind turbines uh, for power. And they had asked me to go out to uh, the Mojave Desert, where they have a park of this, of these turbines, and they wanted a picture uh, taken, uh, and they wanted clouds, they wanted, you know, everything the way you see it. There's no way I could uh, predict, you know, ordering some clouds in. Because this is not digital, this is how we film. So uh, I went, I actually took my wife with me because I thought, well, we'll make a little trip of it. So we, we, uh, I pack up the 4x5 camera, I you know, took some film. I, only, I probably only took 10 sheets of film thinking that on this one I'm just going to do some test shooting and you know, get some markings so I could make landmarks and know where I'm going to end up going for the final shoot. So I get there, it's blowing, it's crazy. The, the storm's coming in, and and all of a sudden it starts snowing, and I'm thinking, whoa, I'm here, and I look, and it's like, whoa, look at those clouds. This is it. This is it.